Um, hi, my name is Laura Carter. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in the Earth, Environmental, and Planetary Science Department. Um, and uh, like Lauren said, my research looks at what happens when magma chambers deep in the Earth's crust interact with the rocks around them, how they cook them. Um, in particular, I'm most interested on if those rocks contain carbon, how much extra carbon dioxide can we release to the atmosphere. And obviously, if you've watched the news, we know this is important for climate change. So, we know that carbon is stored in various reservoirs in and on the Earth's surface. It makes up life in the biosphere. It's buried in rocks deep in the Earth's ocean. Um, and we know that it's present in fossil fuels. It can transfer between these reservoirs, such as the burning of fossil fuels into the atmosphere, on pretty short time scales at the surface. But there's a slower, there's a slower processes happening in the Earth that transfer carbon on time scales relevant for long-term climate change. Carbon can be transferred deep into the Earth when tectonic plates run into each other and one slides underneath the other. Um, this carbon is brought back to the surface through volcanoes, similar to if you open a bottle of soda and you get the fizz coming out. Um, my research investigates what happens when that bottle of soda gets extra carbon added um, through the rocks that the, volcan the volcanic uh, plumbing system passes through. Um, so imagine you just get a lot more fizz. And I do this by doing uh, high pressure, high temperature experiments. I essentially melt rocks in a lab. And my research has found three ways that magma interacts with the rocks. The first is it consumes it like Pac-Man. And this releases bubbles. Um, unfortunately, more bubbles means a more violent eruption. So if, for example, this happened in Mount Merapi and killed over 400 people in 2010. The second way is that magma chambers not only release carbon dioxide, but also water. And this percolates through the rocks surrounding it picking up some chemicals, dropping others off, like when lime deposits in your shower head. Um, and this deposits, in this case, precious minerals like copper and gold and provides hydrothermal power. The third way is that some rocks actually just break down by heating and re releasing the carbon dioxide. This weakens the rock that's left behind, making it unstable. And then we get dangerous landslides like the one at Mount St. Helens in, in 1980 that triggered the eruption. These are all quick, short-term processes that we see in our human lives. But on a long time scale, all of these processes also release a lot of CO2. Um, only a couple of volcanoes uh, around the globe today actually uh, have these processes occurring deep underneath the ground. Um, and with the addition of human input, that means that only a portion of a portion of the carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere is from cooking the crust. But if we look back in time, we know that plate tectonics has shifted the Earth's continents around, for example, the breakup of Pangaea. And this means that the number and location of volcanoes has changed over time throughout Earth's history. So if we look at the Cretaceous, not only were there dinosaurs, but there were a lot more volcanoes. And a lot of those volcanoes we estimate to have undergone these processes with the carbon rocks. So by my estimate, this means a lot of CO2 coming out of these volcanoes which may have contributed to the hotter climate during that time. This is important uh, to look this far back in Earth's history, because if we can understand the natural processes that affected climate, um, we can better calibrate our climate models and anticipate what might happen in the future. So you can think of my research, or my lab, or the Earth as like a kitchen. Magma chambers are like an oven. Um, they don't produce cakes, unfortunately. Um, since today is actually my birthday, I would appreciate that, but. <laughs> but it does produce precious ores like gold and silver. Um, the downside are, oops, sorry, the downside are the mishaps in the kitchen, the volcanic eruptions, the landslides, and long after you've cleaned the kitchen, you have the lingering gas um, that sometimes sets off your smoke alarm. In this case, the carbon dioxide that can heat the Earth's atmosphere and affect long-term climate change. Thank you.